Ariel Hawani wrapping up UFC 118 with UFC President Dana White. And Dana, this uh, James Tony saga has lasted eight months for you. Can you finally breathe a sigh of relief now that it's over? Yeah. And, and listen, ju just to make it clear, I, I don't know you know, how it came off through this whole thing or here in the press conference. No disrespect at all towards James Tony or to boxing. Um, you know, boxing is a sport that I love, and uh, I, I, I have a lot of respect for James, you know, what he's accomplished in boxing and everything else. At the presser, you said this morning you got a little nervous. At any point, did the thought come to the back of your mind and say, man, what will I do if James Tony knocks this guy out? Yeah, of course it does, you know. Uh, I was nervous going to the fight. I think that's, but you know what though? That's part of the fun of doing uh, big fights and fights like that. You know, when those two guys get in there, first of all, the crowd's going crazy, your heart's beating, your stomach's turning, you know. That, that's the way you should feel when, when a fight's going on. I know you said you expected Couture to go in, take him down, and pretty much uh, grind out a win pretty quickly. But, you know, honestly, did you think Tony would look a little better out there? Listen, let me tell you what, what is it now, uh, like 12 years ago, I, I met a guy named John Lewis, okay, and, and I had been in boxing since I was 17 years old. He came over to my gym, and what that guy was able to do to me blew my mind, you know. I know what can happen when you get in there with a mixed martial artist, you know, it, it's, it's the day that I took the, you know, the pill in the matrix, and, uh, and it opened my eyes to a whole new world of fighting, and uh, tonight it happened to James Tony. You know, it doesn't matter how great you are on your feet. It's the thing that makes this sport so great. Um, it's why all the kids right now are, are, are getting into mixed martial arts. Why would you want to learn one thing when you can learn everything? Do you regret putting on this match? No, not at all. Uh, you know, the, the way I look at it is, like I said, James Tony picked a fight and he got one. And, and as this thing, as James Tony got out there and started chasing me around and all this stuff started happening, you know, I got my finger on the pulse and I get the feel if people want to see a fight or not. People wanted to see this James Tony Couture fight. People were intrigued by it. People were interested in it. Um, I made sure and built a great card around it because he could have clipped Couture early or Couture could have done what he did tonight. You know, and I, want, I don't ever want the fans to turn the TV off and go, I should have never bought this. Will we ever see James Tony fight in the UFC again? No. Uh, James Tony is the IBA and NABO heavyweight champion. Um, he, he's got an incredible career uh, as a professional boxer, and that's where he should be. Do you have any interest in ever seeing it? Let's say Floyd Mayweather tomorrow says, you know, I'd like to get in there. Andre Ward, a young boxer in his prime. Would you ever do this fight again? The same exact thing will happen. You know, I, I don't think Floyd Mayweather is going to chase me around calling me names and doing the things that Tony did. The, the best way that I can explain it to you and to everybody out there, James Tony picked a fight and he got one. We answered this question back in 1993, you know, and uh, we answered it again here in 2010. Is this the defining moment of Randy Couture's career or just kind of a side note? No, this is just another, you know, it, the way I looked at this thing and the thing that I really love and respect about Randy Couture is this was just another challenge for him, you know, and, and Randy Couture is one of those guys that, you know, Believe me, there's a lot of guys that would take a fight like this and go, I know what I'm going to do to this guy and blah, blah, blah. Randy Couture trained hard. He worked on this thing. He had a game plan. You know what I mean? He, he's, he's a true professional. When, when I, I'll tell you right now, one of the things that I love, when, when I was sitting out with Mike Tyson last week in my office, here's what Mike Tyson said to me. He's like, man, Randy Couture's like one of those old school fighters, man. He's one of these guys that if you beat him and the next time you fight him, he'll come out and start trying to knock you out like he beat you the first time. And that's the way Couture is, and that's why, you know, Couture is who he is. Safe to assume that his next fight will be at light heavyweight, that he'll go back down to 205? Randy. Yeah, his next fight will be at light heavyweight against one of the top guys in that division. He's in the mix, right? He's in the mix. All right, let's talk about Frankie Edgar, BJ Penn. A lot of fans, you know, giving Frankie his props, but saying it wasn't all that exciting. What do you think of his performance? You're a complete jackass if you did not appreciate what you saw there tonight. You know, give this kid his respect. He just fought BJ Penn for the second time, and people doubted whether he won the first time. Nobody can doubt whether he won this time. It was, it was an absolute domination. He hit, he hit BJ Penn with big shots, uh, you know, beat him on his feet, beat him on the ground, was able to take him down with big slams, um, and then BJ Penn would uh, get that top position, almost had the mount, Frankie got out of it. Frankie, Frankie absolutely 100% dominated and destroyed BJ Penn. Why do, that means something. Absolutely, why don't you think people give him enough respect? Well, I don't know that yet. I haven't heard anybody say that, so I don't know. If going into this fight, no one gave him any respect. Right. Going into the first fight, no one gave him respect. And just people saying, you know, it wasn't all that flashy, exciting, you know, not like what BJ was doing to guys when he was beating them as a champion. I thought it was incredible, you know. I, I thought what he did tonight, you, you got to look at who they're doing it to. He just did it to BJ Penn. 
It's not like he just did it to some guy you've never heard of. He just did that to BJ Penn for five rounds. I think that's pretty spectacular. And let's just put it on the record. Maynard, uh, Edgar next, the rematch. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of people, because of Gray Maynard, he's never, well, he hasn't finished a fight, I think, in his last eight or seven. And then, you know, with, with Frankie tonight, just saying what the people are saying, any reservations about that fight, not, um, you know, living up to expectations? No reservations whatsoever. You know, again, you know, listen, when you say people say that, I say the media say that. I, I, uh, I don't buy into the media b you know, we're going to put on a fight, and, uh, you know, when, when uh, Maynard and, and Frankie fight, people are going to want to see it. Do you think our, uh, our, the next time we see BJ will be at welterweight or lightweight? Um, I don't know. I don't know what's next for BJ. Okay. Just a couple more, if you don't mind. Um, prior to the fight, BJ said that he wishes his relationship with you was a little better. Are you going to look to maybe smooth it over? He wouldn't go into detail as to why uh, there was an issue, but are you looking to maybe mend the fences, so to speak? Yeah, well, the, the, the problems with BJ and I, I didn't create. So that's up to BJ. Are you able to talk on what is the issue? No, I, I don't want to drag it out in, into the public. Okay. It's, it's not important. Kenny Florian, you said uh, he chokes in big fights. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's a mental thing for him? I don't know. It's got to be, man. Kenny Florian is so well-rounded and so gifted and so nasty, man. You didn't see any leg kicks tonight. You didn't see him kick into the body. You didn't even see him letting his hands go. Even in the last round, when I had him down two to nothing and his corner had to have him down two to nothing, he didn't come out. You, you would have think you would have thought there would have been a, a sense of urgency where he would have felt like I have to pull off a knockout or a submission to win this fight, and he didn't go for it at all. A lot of media members were here for the first time. Old veteran media members. I saw you sitting with Bob Ryan, yep. who has not been a very big MMA supporter in the past. What's your take on how they received this event? Yeah, well, it, it goes to what I was saying earlier about Boston coming out and doing this. Bob Ryan hates MMA. He doesn't like it at all, yet he was here tonight. He came here tonight in the city of Boston and, and, and was open-minded enough to sit through some fights, watch the fight with me, asked a lot of questions, talked to Shaq. You know, listen, this isn't going to be everybody's uh, cup of tea, man. Not everybody's going to love mixed martial arts, but I have so much respect for the people like Bob Ryan and many other journalists who were here tonight who came out and gave it a shot and at least, uh, you know, put everything aside and came out. Dude, it's Saturday night. You know what I mean? It's Saturday night. There's a lot of other things they could be doing. They came here and gave it a shot. Okay, final question. Uh, we pretty much know what the rest of the year looks like for you in the UFC, um, but there are two events that we don't know where they will take place. Rampage Machida, you haven't officially announced that, but they have talked about it, and GSP Koscheck. Anything you can break for us here tonight? No. Dude, by the time I'm here at this point after the fight, my brain is like uh, scrambled okay. eggs. I thought maybe you just knew the answer already. Yeah, no, I don't. All right, well, thank you so much for the time, Dana. Welcome home. Thank you. I, I hope it was a successful event for you. It was awesome. Thank you.